Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model surfaces in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. Now we're at the point in our workflow where we're almost ready to create our analytical model. It is important to understand that when you create a surface in your STAD Pro Physical Modeler, that that surface will be broken down into a finite element mesh whenever your model is transferred over to the analytical modeler. Now before we do that process, we're going to go ahead and review our default mesh density and make any changes that we want. And this will help us control how the mesh is created. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our global options. To do that, we're going to select the data tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on our options icon. Now within this area, we're going to see our analysis model tab, and we're going to take a look at some of the meshing information. So the first thing we're going to see is that we're going to ask the program to segment our surfaces. That's going to be selected by default. Now you can choose the mesh type. We're going to go ahead and select quadrilateral, but triangular meshing is also permitted. And we're going to get enter the maximum allowed distance between nodes. We're going to enter four feet for this particular examples. We can enter our merge node tolerance information and our out of plane tolerance information. Now all of these meshing characteristics will apply to the overall mesh of all the surfaces in the model as a global criteria. So when you're done specifying that information, go ahead and click OK. Now if you'd like to review how that's going to look before you get over to the analytical modeler, you can click on your view tab in the ribbon toolbar and turn on your analysis model. This will give you a rough preview of what that's going to look like. Now, if everything looks good to you, you can leave it as is, or if you feel like this mesh density doesn't quite work, you can go back to those options, readjust it, and then preview your analytical model again. Now, the program won't let you actually add new elements or anything else while in the analytical model view, so we're gonna go ahead and turn that off at this point. Now, in addition to that, you also have the ability, instead of applying the global criteria, you can apply a mesh density for individual surfaces or regions. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. In the ribbon toolbar, let's now select the data tab and the groups icon and select the group of surfaces we wanna work on. We're gonna select the walls for this exercise and click select. Next, we're going to navigate to the appropriate spreadsheet. To do that, we're going to go to the spreadsheet tab in the ribbon toolbar, and we're going to enter the surface properties spreadsheet. Here we're going to see that the surfaces we have currently selected are highlighted, and if we scroll over, we can see a mesh size is available. So what this mesh size field will do is it will override the default or global parameters. I'm going to enter a mesh density for my walls and my elevator shaft as two feet. I'm going to enter that for the first selected surface. Then I'm going to go up to the data tab in the ribbon toolbar. I'm going to find some additional spreadsheet tools here. Now what I want to do is I want to copy this down to the other selected surfaces. I have my cursor in the field I just changed and then I'm going to go ahead and say fill selection. Fill selection will basically copy the highlighted column with the current value to the other highlighted or selected elements. So let's go ahead and say fill selection. Now all of those are entered as two feet. In addition to that, I'm also going to select my region in my model. So I can assign a different mesh density for a region that is within a surface. So I'm going to select my entire model and I'm going to go to the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon toolbar, and I'm gonna to go to the regions icon. Now again, this also has a mesh density side. If this field is empty, it'll go ahead and inherit whatever mesh density is assigned to the overall surface or the global criteria. But I wanna tighten it up in this area. So I'm gonna enter a density size of one feet, hit enter to accept the change. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like so far. 
So again, we're going to select the View tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and then review our analytical model. Now this time, let's go ahead and take a closer look at what we're seeing here. We were able to see that the global criteria applied the default mesh density to all of the surfaces unless specified otherwise. I specified a different mesh density on each of the walls within my elevator shaft as well as my region. In addition to that, what you're also going to notice is that all of these interior points within each surface are also connected to the surface. So this means any interior points and beams have a positive connection to the surface, which is exactly what I'm looking for eventually in my analysis. Now, in addition to being able to customize the mesh density for each surface, you're also able to specifically enter where you would like a density point. So if there's a particular point within a surface, all you basically have to do is create a node within that surface, and that will automatically be a density point. And in addition to that, we also have the ability to create a reference line. So if you would like to kind of basically segment or control where your mesh density kind of changes, you can go ahead and create a reference line. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And I'm going to select my surface at my top level. And I'm going to tell the program I want to edit the surface. To do that, I'm going to go to the Surface tab and the Ribbon Toolbar and tell the program I want to edit the surface. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the area I'm working on. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Model tab and the Ribbon Toolbar. And I can see this reference line icon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to create an area. Now what this will do is this will make a natural break in my finite element mesh, which basically means that no finite elements will be spanning across that line. It'll give you a break. Now this is done in order to, if you want to define something special or you're looking for adding some specific loads or you just want to control your mesh, gen mesh density in general. So to finish this process, let's go ahead and click on the Surface tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and unselect the Edit Surface icon, and we will commit our changes. Now again, let's go ahead and select All and view our analytical model. And we should be able to see up here that there are no elements that span across that reference line that we just created. Now at this point in our workflow, this concludes our process for modeling our surfaces in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. In the next video, we're going to finish this process officially by building our analytical model with all the information that we assigned today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.